Hi folks, so for this channel's final video of 2020, I thought I might do a rambly vlog sharing some thoughts about uh, how this channel's done in, in 2020 and, and some ideas going forward. Um, and just, you know, so, some sort of general ideas about some of the stuff that I've been working on and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is going to be a bit of a rambly video, more rambly than most, but, um, you know, that's pretty on brand for this channel at this stage anyway. Um, so yeah, through 2020, actually, uh, I must admit, this channel has not been receiving the the most amount of my focus, even though this channel sort of gets more views than almost anything that I put out online. Uh, I've been spending more time working on like my gaming channel, gaming with werewolves, streaming on Twitch. Um, and I've even actually, with the help of the Destination Linux Network, started a new podcast called Gamesphere. Uh, you can find it at gamesphere.show, uh, or it's on the Destination Linux uh, YouTube channel as well. And I've had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I've also been putting out a lot of videos on Peertube as well. For those of you that don't know, Peertube is a piece of software that you can sort of host on your server, and it distributes videos. Um and it uh, federates within the uh, the Fediverse, uh, the open source social network of all different kinds of uh, software and, and stuff. It's an incredibly diverse network and I've had so much fun with it over the past year. But yeah, Peertube, think of it as the open source, federated, decentralized uh, version, uh, version of YouTube. I don't like saying that because one of the reasons like I'm putting out a lot of content for, for Peertube that doesn't make its way over to YouTube is that Peertube um, is sort of developing its own identity away from YouTube now, uh, which is actually very interesting and very exciting. It feels great to be a part of that. Uh, whereas now YouTube just feels like the corporations have taken over and it's like monetize your attention at all costs, um, which is which is like, um, I don't know, takes all the fun out of it, fun out of it if you ask me. Um, and, and, and I kind of like just like having a place where I can share thoughts with people who um, who aren't under this sort of corporate umbrella, which is really nice. Uh, and it's it's sort of allowed a little bit more, I don't want to sound pretentious when I say artistic autonomy, but it's just nice to get away from having to, back, you know, kowtow to the YouTube algorithm and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's nice to have a place that we've built that we can call our own. You know, like little things like that, the, the kind of mean more than just getting the most views on a social media platform. I get more excited by 100 views on Peertube than I do with 1,000 views on YouTube. Like, it's it's kind of strange. And um, and a lot of people will say, well, Peertube is just like open source YouTube. But, you know, it, but it's not. Like, it's its own thing. Um, it, it, it has that mantra of we're not going to, you know, we're not going to fall the titan. YouTube is as YouTube does, but maybe we can have a little carve out a little niche and as long as we survive, we survive. You know, we're not like a corporation that has to grow at all costs to satisfy our shareholders. We're just a software project that are just trying to make our way in the world and survive. And that's great. That's 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 wonderful. Um and it feels a lot more like old school YouTube. It feels like 2010 YouTube as peer tube. Um and it's not to say that Peertube should ever replace YouTube. I, I love YouTube. YouTube's a great website. I really enjoy it. I watch most of my content here. But for a certain corner of the internet that we can call our own and we can make videos about really nerdy stuff in really nerdy ways and appreciate the underlying technology that, that all of this works on, like, that, 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 that speaks to me. That does. It might not speak to everyone. It might not speak to many people. But, like... The fact that um, that Peertube can find its own identity and that we're making videos for Peertube, like, like I'll make a video and be like, yeah, that's that's more suitable for Peertube rather than YouTube, you know, like that that that's interesting. I like that um, because there are a lot of YouTube pretenders out there, uh, and I've seen a lot of them fall as well. And I've uploaded videos to a lot of them as well. They never ever work. If you're trying to like emulate YouTube. Uh, you will always fail because YouTube is actually a pretty good website. Uh, it lets almost anyone upload an unlimited number of videos. Uh, it allows them to monetize those videos. Uh, and it allows, you know, like, unless you're a particularly controversial character, like, you know, you, you, you're not really going to have too much of a worry about how your content will do. Like, you'll get, you'll probably get more views on, on YouTube than any of the YouTube pretenders, if that's something that you care about. Uh, and at the end of the day, yeah, there are issues with YouTube. You get content IDs and stuff like that. But at the end of yeah, but like ultimately, um, 
most content generally does pretty well on YouTube if, if you know, better, you know, like from a, from a pragmatic point of view, um, YouTube's not bad, you know, it just isn't. And there are even open source ways like using NVIDIAs where you can watch YouTube in a more freedom respecting capacity as well. Uh, you can download it with YouTube DL and watch it with MPV. Uh, you can actually just watch a YouTube video using the MPV. If you just go have MPV and YouTube DL installed, just type MPV, the YouTube URL of a video, and you can just watch it right there in, in the media player. Don't need a browser. Um, so for all, for all of that, um, you know, YouTube's not bad, right? Uh, YouTube even has RSS feeds. If you want to check out, you know, how to find the RSS feed of a YouTube channel, just go to my website, chrisware.uk. I've got a guide on there for it. Um, and actually, there's a video on this channel that tells you how to do it as well. Um, so, yeah. And um, so, you know, you've got, a, you know, any of the YouTube pretenders have a lot of work to do to actually take over YouTube. And a lot of them, I think, are just like wildly optimistic in the hope that as much as everyone complains about YouTube, that one day it will crumble and fall and there will be some pretender there to pick up the pieces and try and rebuild but that's just that's you know if you want to look at the more, most successful video platforms um that have worked in the same realm as youtube look at snapchat and and tick tiktok god i almost went blank there again um whereas you know they they are video platforms but because they haven't tried to emulate youtube they've tried to build something in their own right um they have, have seen a great deal of success there. They've managed to capture a market, not not by taking it necessarily taking it away from YouTube. Many of the big TikTokers and I think Snapchatters as well, like they'll have presence on, on YouTube and other social media too. Like social media isn't one of those things where you actually draw people away at the expense of other places. That's where Mixer went wrong trying to get exclusivity contracts. Exclusivity isn't, no, I'm here on YouTube. I'm also on PeerTube. I make different content for both that's fine do you know what i mean that's how how it should work and the content should should in the platform should build its own culture now i've not i've got you know i'm not interested in snapchat and tiktok i mean they're they're, they're for you know they're for younger people anyway as far from what i can tell um uh, and and you know peertube is i think it, it definitely speaks to me in a way that, that that anywhere else doesn't it fits nicely within the fediverse which i'm really enjoying as well another social network of sorts that um is you know it it's it's sort of run and owned collectively by the people that use it and that's great um you know there, there are some companies that are involved in it in one way or another be it hosting or support or uh something like that but at the end of the day it's not like it's it's this thing that's owned by one company um you can have a single user instance or you can pay someone else to run your instance for you or you can just join a big instance that is like sponsored by a company you know some of the big mastodon instances for example they actually have you know backings from from companies which is kind of you know interesting and there's you know millions of people on it and it and it breaks away from that idea of like well you know people say that mastodon isn't worth shit because it doesn't have hundreds of millions of users you know it has it has like four million users and that's fine that's plenty i'm not going to speak to four million people do you know what i mean like like enough users is enough users enough views is enough views i don't need all of the views i don't need this promise that i'm gonna one day be fucking jake paul uh it's 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 ridiculous i think it's this this incredibly greedy and self-centered culture that we've built around ourselves with the internet it's the narcissism that social networks bring and i like how the fediverse breaks away from that uh peertube of course is part of the fediverse pixel fed miss key mastodon plerima there are others um uh, I think like there's like Lemmy, there's there's even like yeah, there's all sorts, um, and it's amazing. It's absolutely you know fantastic. And don't get me wrong, it's not for everyone. It can be raw and wild and untamed, and I like that about it because it's people, real people, uh, with all of their flaws. There, not you know, not people managing their social media profile like it's their resume or anything like that. Like it's you know. Um, and that speaks to me. It really, really does. All of it does. It speaks to me of authenticity. It speaks to me of a, an earlier era of the internet where people felt a little bit freer. Um, and, and, and before everything became about money and views and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and that's like, you know, if I wanted to get, if, to be honest, if I wanted to get the most views, I'd just make distro reviews every day on this channel. It'd be great. It'd be great. I'd get loads of views. But what would it be for? 
you know, I don't, I don't have ads turned on on this channel. Um, I, I do a, you know, a monthly ad read for the destination, destination Linux network, just, you know, um, but for, for their benefit. So, you know, despite the, you know, it'll be like Bitwarden or DigitalOcean or something like that. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, the, you know, I, I like breaking away from that. I like, I like the authenticity. I like, you know, what, what PeerTube has become. Um, so anyway. That's kind of started me down the road of this channel having an identity crisis for a number of reasons, right? Things have shifted uh, in many ways. Things have shifted in the Linux community. Things have shifted in the YouTube world. Things have shifted in, in my life and how I approach making content as well. Um, and to be honest, I'd, lo I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. I'd love to. So le let me know your thoughts in the, in the comment section below because I, I really uh, I'm, I'm a little lost for a direction on this channel, if I'm completely honest. Um, I kind of feel that like Linux distributions just are, are not interesting anymore and in a good way, right? I'm on Linux Mint Debian edition right here. I've got Debian over here. They do everything that I want them to do. Yeah, some of their software is a step behind the versions. You know, some of it's a year old. You know, most normal people who aren't really interested in technology want to set up their computer the way that they like it and they want it to stay like that forever. Like this constant up updating of, of the latest and greatest stuff is is that's not something that most people want most people hate that most people just want to do the thing that they want to do um and that's that's kind of fine right and if you want something newer then just you you got a flat pack for it i know some people uh not too fond of flat packs they want everything to be packaged for them in their distro repository uh i'm kind of fine with it i'm i'm a bit like you know mixed on snaps because like snaps are like they're good in principle, but the fact that they they're so centralized and that they have the proprietary back end is you know and and the fact that they're there to serve canonical as a as a you know corporate server system um that's that's fine for them like you know like i'm not I'm not criticizing them for uh developing uh their business. Uh, but when it comes to me as, as the end user, it's probably something that I would I would look for alternatives before I turn to Snaps because buying into the the Snaps ecosystem is uh, well, it's 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 not in the spirit of free and open source software, really, is it? Now you know, but but again, like it's uh, it, it's not exactly the devil, you know. Um, it's fine. Like I use it as a last resort, I guess. I'd rather use Snaps than like try and. Than any kind of hacky solution or something like that, or, or Java, you know, have, have to put something together in Java or something like that. You know, I'd, I'd rather snaps, you know, like, um, anyway. So, so, you know, I'll probably be talking a little bit about, about distributions. I'll probably try and try them out and all this kind of stuff. But fundamentally, once I find something that I'm vaguely happy with, I'm probably going to sit on it for a while. Um, because, you know, what I can do on Linux Mint Debian Edition, I can do on Fedora, albeit in maybe a newer version. I could do it on Ubuntu, I could do it on Arch, I could do it on SUSE. And to be honest, a lot of my key software is in app images now. So I can just t literally take my software from distro to distro with zero penalty whatsoever, even in terms of the version that I'm using. And then I actually, what I love about app images is that you do actually have that micromanaged control of the version of app images. That's great. Um, it means like I don't have to update midway through a project or something like that. Like I, I get full, you know, I get that extra level of control thing. That's wonderful. Um, so yeah, like, um, I think the difference between distributions now is, is not as great as it used to be. Um, and unless I benefit specifically from a use case of a particular distribution, like, um, I think endless OS, that's the, the, uh, Linux distribution that's aimed at people that don't, have a permanent connection to the internet so it's got a lot of stuff bundled with it i mean that's that's a great idea for a linux distribution but considering that i am always connected to the internet am i really the right person to test it um would i i could give it a spin in a virtual machine that doesn't that doesn't demonstrate much though really does it so maybe i'll I'll continue talking about some some open source projects that i'm fascinated by maybe i'll talk someone recommended that i talk about snaps flat packs app images as well like what i just did but like maybe flesh it out into a full video uh so i'll probably i think i lean to that um i i do sometimes chew over the idea of like i don't really want to do scripted content that doesn't seem like like me that doesn't seem like um i perhaps i, I was chewing over the idea of maybe doing more live content so i'd go i'd go live on this channel as you would expect and maybe talk 
with you good folks about uh, various pieces of software of the day, you know, what you folks are getting up to and all that kind of stuff, just, just, just having a bit of a casual chat. And then like, you know, choosing some particularly nice clips to, to keep around on the channel um, for those of you that don't make the live stream. I thought that 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 might be a good option. Would you guys uh, uh, be interested in something like that? I think it would be. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, maybe. Uh, I guys certainly worth a certainly worth a shot because uh, I don't know. Like the, the thing is, like I think this channel needs something new. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Like views on this channel are down, but there are too many potential reasons why that is. Like I, I've not been putting the love and care into this channel that it really deserves. So I, I think a lot of that's got to land on me. Um, I've also been caring a lot less about making videos that are popular and just making videos that I like, and that will hit me in the views as well. Um, also, you never know what the YouTube algorithm's doing. So I could, it could be something there. It could be that the culture of YouTube is shifting and that this kind of uh, bloke talks about his hobby in front of a camera for goodness knows how long is just not, not in vogue with the algorithm right now. That's certainly, that's certainly a possibility. I think that a lot of YouTubers do blame all their problems on the algorithm. They go, woe is me, donate to Patreon. Woe is me, donate to Patreon. Um, but I'm certainly not asking for uh, your like, support or sympathy. Um, I mean, I do have a liberal pay. <laughs> now that you mention it. Um, but to be honest, that's mostly there just to... I don't know, like support Libra, Libra Pay more than anything else. I do. Uh, that's what I use to support a lot of other open source projects is Libra Pay. I like Libra Pay. It's really good. I'm sort of on it because I like Libra Pay, not because um, I'm, I'm so much just trying to raise funds. It's great to that, that some uh, of you good folks do like want to support the channel. Um, for those of you that are wondering, the money from that goes has the money from it so far has gone to upgrading my Restreamio account so that I can stream to PeerTube uh, when PeerTube live streaming gets off the ground. That would be really cool. So some people, so yeah, I was talking it over with a few of you folks in the Fediverse and yeah, you would like, you know, like Restreamio is not the cheapest thing in the world. It's something that I could probably squeeze to afford if if I knew that it was worth it. So I had to look around and um, and, and to be honest, the LibraPay is doing, uh, you know, it's doing a little bit better than I expect, considering I never plug it and it's LibraPay. It's not like it's Patreon or something that people would instinctively go to. Um, I, I, I'm glad for the, the, the people were quite, you know, forthcoming with their support and that, uh, I mean, it, it does mean like, it does hit you in the heartstrings if I'm completely honest. Um, so I decided to put that money into rebuilding the channel. I think for the time being until you know like i think that's what libra pay is going to be going to be for so it's less supporting me more supporting the channel directly because you know I've, I've got a job so it's 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 not like uh you know how they how youtubers always say this video is made possible with you the patreon subscribers it's like well no i'd, I'd still be making videos if i was getting no money at all like it's not hugely contingent um, but it is nice to have some money to put back into the channel to, to build it in, in one way or another. Um, but yeah, like I've, you know, like I said, I've been putting most of my, my time into, to the gaming channel, into peer to, uh, into the podcast as well. Um, simply cause that's just, I don't know, like it seems to be more interesting and fun and, and new stuff is happening there. Um, I mean, the Linux gaming scene is pretty interesting as well. Like in the past couple of years, we've gone from like some, you know, distant sideshow to like being better than Max at games. You know, that's kind of strange. You know, like nowadays we take it for granted. It's like, of course, Linux is better than Mac for games. But like, mm, and streaming, game streaming, that's really cool too. Like, that's amazing. Uh, GeForce Now, uh, Stadia, that stuff's really good. Love it. Uh, so, you know, like there's, there's some exciting stuff happening, but that, you know, now I feel like Linux gaming is just gaming at this point. There's, there's, the distinction is like, you know, does it, it like I can game on Debian, some AAA titles amazingly, like it's fine. Like it's, 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 yeah, it's not like you have to do any kind of, you know, open source magic to get stuff working anymore. 
I want to play the like the like cyberpunk. I just open up a web browser. It's it's you know it's amazing. Um, and and the open source gaming scene has has gone from strength to strength. Shapes came out this year. Shapes is a great game, open source, built with passion and love. Um, yeah, I absolutely love Shapes. Uh, S H A P E Z dot I O. You go to the website. It'll get, I think the website has a preview on it. Music for that game is lovely. It's wonderful, beautiful music. Uh, it's a bit like Factorio, but a bit more like like it's like Factor like Factorio meets Mini Metro. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful open source game. Um, and I and, and there's some great open source games on the Itch Store as well. Um, I've been streaming a little bit on Twitch. Twitch is kind of cool. It's just for you know it's a bit more social and that's why i kind of thought like i like i like twitch because i like hanging out with 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 you know those that follow me on twitch um so yeah um if you, if you want to see more of me more more content than, than twitch I, I also like with twitch it's, it's kind of uh more casual as well like i talk about things that i wouldn't want to put to a video over on twitch as well um so that's kind of you know that that, that is what it is um but yeah so maybe i'll do some live streaming it's just like the idea of like doing some live streaming that that isn't gaming because like with gaming if it's if you know if the live stream's a bit quiet or everyone's just being a bit chill then you know you've got the game to sort of uh lean back on um but i don't know i'll i'll work out something uh for uh for the live stream um should be pretty cool though i'd i i'd be um interested in, in trying out a few things messing around um just a thought like uh you know just just chewing that one over um but yeah um but yeah i so so, so i think i think this channel has definitely stagnated not to complain because i think that's just as much my fault i think it is my fault um and i think that like i'm in the process of now where i should be looking for ideas on something to make it more interesting again i think i've fallen too neatly into a, a routine into a you know into a bit of a into a bit of a crevice uh so you know looking for new ideas looking for something but it's not i don't you know it's like not entirely me like linux distributions have just not been as exciting as as the, like and, and that's in, that's a good way but like i say like all distributions are basically like you can what you can do on one you can do on all you know you might like one package format over another you might like one set of repositories over another but at the end of the day what you can do on one you can do on all it makes it you know like five years ago linux distributions were or even more Linux distributions were really exciting because it's like you, oh you can do this one on this one like there was more differences between them um and now i think the biggest differences between the linux distributions is their philosophy in how they approach the end user problems and that's interesting but that doesn't change with each new release you know it's not something that you can do in an easily digestible formatable videos mm -hmm. long rambly thought videos like these which is uh which is fine it's good but um yeah so yeah i think that's about it i think all in all uh unlike most other people i think 2020 has been an interesting year and, and and i feel like i've come out of 2020 with more uh than than i went in with it like i feel my my life is is better uh, and i think a lot of people don't you know can't can't say that i think like 2020 has devastated a lot of people and very very you know uh, but i said you know so I, I go into 2021 you know like Hoping, hoping to like spruce this this channel up a bit somehow the other day yesterday i was focused i was just like tw um twiddling around with thumbnails um you know and and um and trying to work out like all the little graphics for the for the videos that i do and and i ended up just really making just just over focusing on these like minor changes and i felt like there was some like psychological symptoms there like some sort of symbology that's like um you, you know you're looking to change something but you don't know what to change and i do kind of like feel like that uh it's like as well like um earlier today i was like fiddling with all the mic settings in in the, like oh should i compress it this much should i do what you know noise cancelling here or like all these little things to do with the, the sound quality on these videos at the end of the day 99 percent of people don't even notice or care like you can hear me all right that's good enough right um 
you know, these, these videos have never been high fidelity. I've always been low fidelity. That's, that's, you know, on brand. Um, so yeah, looking, looking for, you know, I, cause the thing is like, I don't, you know, I feel like I like where the gameplay channel's going. I like where project Chronicles going. I like where game sphere is going. I like where peer tube is going. Everything's going in the right direction. I'm certainly not complaining, but this channel, it's, it's, I think I felt like this last year as well. Like it's just stagnated a little bit. Um, I'm talking a little bit about, you know, a neat project here, a neat project there. Um, but I think I need something that gives me the impetus to give it some love again. I need, I, I need to like, you know, take it on a holiday, not take it on a, like take it on a cruise or something. I don't know. Um, I need to do something with it that makes me sort of excited to make videos for this channel again, because it kind of feels like I'm stuck in a rut. Um, and I think that the algorithm is onto me. Um, I mean, views are a little bit down, but like I said, oh, they're, they're actually, the views are down a lot. Uh, but then that, that's the ebb and flow with channels as well. I think a lot of YouTubers forget that. Like, ch like everyone, like a lot of YouTubers, they, they see the channel do well over the course of like one year, and they think, oh, great, if I'm on this trajectory in five years' time, I'll have a million subscribers. And it just it doesn't work like that. Like, it's like waves of the ocean. You know, you have good years, you have bad years. You have good years, you have bad years. Occasionally, very rarely, a YouTuber will just go and have... A million views in, in the course of a year or two but those youtubers they will fall as quickly as they rise as well like a lot of people don't realize a lot of youtubers don't realize that you could have a million subs one day and those you know and and, and you could just be like you could people will just move on to the next thing like this idea of uh, like um youtube success is more fleeting than almost any other success um i've noticed so um so this, you know, it it is a little bit uh, grounding to feel that this channel is not as as um, as you know not as popular as it has been. Um, but the thing is, as well, is that part of that is also my own design in another way because there's a lot of types of videos that I don't like making. Um, I don't want to do like Linux community drama like some channels do. Uh, I always find that stuff to be petty and very childish and. Uh, very of low cunning, if you know what I mean. Like it's it's something you know, and and it's usually some storm in a teacup that fizzles out in a couple of weeks anyway. I know that would get me a lot of views because people love the gossip, but it would ruin my like it would. I wouldn't be able to look at myself in the mirror if I was if I was you know, sub if I was lowering myself for the, the purposes of views. I'm only using views as a success metric in a very um, in a in a in a in a relative category, like I was getting more views in previous years than I was today or this year. Um, does that mean my channel is just like not not as good as it was? Basically, that's what I'm saying. Because like I'll get a few, I'll get a lot fewer views on Peer I'll get a lot fewer views on my gameplay channel. Don't care. That's great. Like I'm making videos that I love there. Um, that's wonderful. Um, and it's not something that like I feel bad about. It's just one. It's like. I, I know it's like a relation, you know, whether when a relationship and the magic has just gone out of the relationship, and you both kind of know it, but you're just like, yeah, like if it, like I need, this needs a rejuvenation, this needs a weekend away. This needs a, you know, uh, let's, you know, I'll, I'll go and like rob a bank with this channel and that will re, you know, reinvigorate my excitement for it. <laughs> it's late. I'm talking rubbish. Um, but yeah, like I say, so I could use some ideas, I guess, you know, um, I, uh, a lot of ideas that probably won't necessarily be applicable because sometimes when people suggest video ideas, it'll be like outside of my area of expertise. People might suggest, oh, you should do programming videos or you should do videos on, um, on, uh, on compiling stuff. And it's like, well, you know, I might know a little bit about things like compiling stuff and, and I might occasionally do a little bit of program, but I nowhere near enough to be able to make a worthwhile video on any of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's like, you know, I've got some, th I've got some thinking to do over the next couple of days. Um, but I want to do, I want to do something with this channel that makes me fall in love with it again, I guess. Um, so anyway, right, let's uh, just do a quick recap. I have a gaming channel. I have a peer tube channel. I have another channel where I just muck around with friends called Project Chronicle. Uh, I have a podcast called Gamesphere and I have a website. The most important thing is my website, chrisware.uk. 
I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chris Ware, but that'll be linked to on my website and all that kind of stuff. You just go to my website, chrisware.uk. There's a load of good stuff on there, load of open source goodies as well. Um, so just check that out and follow me on whatever you want to follow me on or not. Um, that's cool. Uh, PeerTube, by the way, of course, has an RSS feed. So if you're not in the Fediverse, just you can subscribe to the RSS feed of the PeerTube channel. It's all good. That'll be on my website too. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for me today. It's it's incredibly late, so I did. Oh my word! My screen has turned off. I've been talking for that long. I hope that hasn't interrupted the video. Uh right. So yeah, thank you, folks, for watching. It's a pleasure as always. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, this video has certainly been more rambly than I thought it would be. Nah, nah, that's a lie. I knew this video would be rambly. I don't know if this is going to be the norm. For, I, I, I don't want this to be, the, I don't necessarily want this to be the norm for videos in the future. Uh, maybe I do. I don't know. Like, leave your thoughts on it. If, if, if you guys suddenly turn, oh, Chris Wittering away for half an hour. I mean, I did Witter away for half an hour. My last video was really rambly as well. But at least it had a point. This video, yeah. Does it have a point? Maybe. If so, I've forgotten it. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, the trouble is with most YouTube channels, most views do not come from subscribers. So the reason I'm kind of making this video is to sort of try and get a feel in the comment section, at least for what subscribers want, because this video will not do well outside of subscribers. So this is your, like, if you're, if you're here watching this video, your comment in this video will have more weight and have more of a say than than other comments because i'll know that you'll you know you watch the all of the videos on this channel basically <laughs> especially all the way through um uh and that stuff does mean a lot more to me than 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 i let on um than is obvious um but i think that's about everything uh yeah, I want to do something with the channel. And I don't quite know what, like I say, I was fussing around with thumbnails and I ended up just coming together with something that was uh, basically what I've already got now. I'm quite happy, like, you know, it's the thing is I'm fussing around the things that don't matter when I should really be thinking about the things that do, you know, the big changes, like what's what what moves me, you know, what what excites me, what excites you. And yeah, you know, I don't know. That's uh, That's a tough one, but... Um, anyway, thank you folks for joining me. It's a pleasure as always. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.